What's up, friends, and welcome to Mordheim, City of the Damned. A couple quick things. I'm going to do my best to edit out the enemy turns where you can't actually see the enemy and, you know, you, there's not actually much happening. Make it more of a dynamic viewing experience. Also, if you don't want to watch the intro, just skip ahead like a minute or two. I want to watch this. It always gets me in the mood for a bit of more time. Not since the horrors of the Black Plague has our land seen such despair. Almost two millennia after Sigmar founded the Empire, the realm is fractured and broken. Three rival factions claim the Imperial Crown, Marienburg, Middenheim, and Lightland. Lure of power brings the armies of men against one another in a seemingly endless tide of battle. An island of peace in a sea of conflict, Mordheim drew wealth such as the city had never seen into its walls. But with its prosperity came the corruption of arrogance and hedonism and greed. The gods could not long abide the outrages of Mordheim's populace. In the heavens, an ill star appeared. A great, twin-tailed comet that some priests warned was nothing less than the Hammer of Sigma. They preached tidings of doom and repentance, but their sermons were ignored. An attitude of rebellious revelry gripped the city as the comet grew ever nearer. The grand festival to celebrate the turn of the year was a mockery of the apocalyptic prophecies. It was then that the hammer fell. The fiery comet plowed through the city, gouging a deep crater in the midst of the poor quarter. The wondrous palace of Count Steinhard was broken. The grand amphitheater shattered. The vast great library blighted by a pall of ash. Fire and smoke decimated the populace, but worse awaited the survivors. A malignant corruption that brought with it mutation and madness. The vile taint of chaos. In the shattered city, Strange green-black stones were discovered. Strange energies emanated from these shards. Warlocks and alchemists experimented with these word stones and soon determined that their uncanny properties could work wonders. Word stone could heal the sick, regenerate the old, or even turn base metal to gold. Lust for Wordstone focused avaricious eyes upon ruined Mordheim. Treasure hunters descended upon the city vying with both mutated horrors that claimed the ruins as their own and crusading zealots who sought to prevent the taint from spreading. Inhuman creatures filtered into Mordheim, staking their own claims. An endless pilgrimage of the greedy and ambitious fighting and dying in a place now called the City of the Damned. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. But I love the Warhammer universe. It's so cool. Well, this is technically the 40k universe, I think. Welcome to Mordheim, City of the Damned. A bit loud, I think. So, new warband. Yeah! Let's go with the human mercenaries. I mean, it's, I think it's the best place to start. My favorite is probably the Skaven. Oh! I love the Skaven, but... Yeah! It's the human mercenaries. Uh, starting rank, we'll just start at zero. So, you've decided to brave the city of the damned in search of gold and glory. There's no shortage of those who've tried before you. If you look hard enough, you'll find their bones littered in the ruins. Mordheim doesn't forgive mistakes, so you'd better not make any. I'll say this for you. You've taken the first step to surviving. You've had the good sense to seek out Luther Wolfenbaum. Hmm. I've forgotten more about this city than you'll ever learn. Listen to me, and you just might leave this place with the fame and fortune you're after. I'm not sure what oaths and vows bind you to Baron von Leitdorfer's service. I'm not really interested in the imperial pretensions of Reichland's Grand Prince either. You need to concentrate on one thing only, and that's the task immediately before you. I. There's word stone in the ruins, ready for the taking. But there's other things in the ruins too. You've got those murdering maniacs from the rock, 
Ready to kill anyone they find with even the smallest shard on them. They're bad. Or even worse are the degenerates who've taken to worshipping the comet that smashed all night. They're twisted in both mind and body, and will happily dump your body into the pit as an offering to their shadow lord. You'll even see things you wouldn't believe, proud of the ruins. The verminous underfolk, the skaven of legend, are quite real, I assure you. They'll steal your wordstone and gnaw your bones, given half a chance. Aye, the dangers are great, but if you were cowardly, you'd never have made the journey here. There's treasure to be had, if you're bold and ruthless enough to claim it. This city chews up the timid and the weak, so remember that, and keep your men strong. Do that, and you might just survive. Timid and weak? We certainly aren't. First things first, let's spend our veteran points. I mean, I've got eight, and we have to change the name of the, of the band. Eight unspent skill points, let's see. So, Commander, anything that's gonna reduce uh, the cost of anything, really. I mean, money is always the big struggle, I find. Reduce the upkeep cost for leaders and impressive warriors by four and by eight. Librarian I always like because I do tend to find that I, I get a lot of blues, blue items, but then getting the enchantments are really hard. So I'll get the level two librarian. Alchemist I don't tend to bother with. Armorer, no. I mean, like, all of the actual items, like armor and weapons and stuff, I tend to find enough just from playing the game. Buying items, we don't buy all that much. Exploring could be worth it. Healer, definitely, because we're going to be getting a lot of guys injured. But maybe, let's decide. Negotiator, renowned. This is very important. Uh, training skills is a huge expense. And then it really, for me, it's a choice between Explorer, so we can send out more scouts for cheaper, <coughs> and find more quality missions. Healer or Explorer? Negotiator? No. Uh, buying items? No. I can't decide. Healer or Explorer? I think Healer. Actually, mm, yeah, it can be quite expensive to, to pay to heal your, your, uh, your soldiers up. Okay, cool. So. Here's your brave leader, brave leader. Name. Stobby von Mortborg. Your brave leader. The first hero, second in command, gonna be a uh, Youngblood, of course. Hire him. Edit him. Who's this? What, my, my, my. Uh, let's see, Sibafed. Sibafed Fuhrs. Welcome, Seb. My henchman. Uh, I'm actually going to start with three of these warriors, and then once my uh, group gets bigger, well, actually, we'll, we'll get two warriors and we'll get one marksman. I do like the marksman, but they're not they're not terribly great in the beginning, I find. This is who's next, Alex Nesterov. Welcome, Alex. Oh, and we should decide on a color scheme for the playthrough. Blue and yellow, not crazy about that. They look too much like jesters of those crazy colors. I like five, five is cool. Seven, eight is cool as well. How about 12, the purple and the, the white and the yellow. Position preset, 12. Royalty suits us and we're gonna rename the warband in a sec I think we'll call ourselves the second sons or oh, the war pigs you now the war pigs definitely will make another comeback who's this next up Dolmar Dolmar Strauss welcome Dolmar and last but not least our first marksman Uh, Mizuma. Mizuma Rosenbach. 
and there's going to be more to come. I've pulled names from you guys who said you wanted to watch more Dime and some of my other regulars. The next up, we've got Dwarf and Blues, then Malice Wonderland, Honor, Raidens, Mwemers Cat, RV Jering, and Raheem Hunter are going to be next. Okay, let's go to the shop and see what we can buy. I don't think I want heavy armor to start. I definitely want a hunting rifle for my for my marksman to start with. Dueling pistol is always good. Longbow, not so much. I like a crossbow as well. I'm gonna buy up all the light armor that I can. Uh, Bugman's madcaps help to hit. And I think I might actually put a great axe on to my, uh, my my young guy. Let's take a look at his skills. I mean, he's got 40% dodge, 16% parry. Still 40% dodge with the great axe, and the great axe does so much better damage. Like, I won't give him light armor just yet. It takes his dodge down to lower than I want to go with him. But eventually, once we start getting blue light armor, we'll give him some of that. Amulets and pendants. Okay, yeah, chance to pass. Yeah, all alone. Madcaps, I want him accurate. And then we'll give him a crossbow because he has decent ballistic skill. Like, how am I going to level him up? I've tried making the young bloods as archers because, you know, that's their highest numbers here is ballistic skill and accuracy. But the skill that they have of Squire's Curse really doesn't synergize with building them as a ranged fighter. So, depending on what weapons we find, I'll either make him use a big two handed axe or something. Or I'll make him very dodgy, and because he gets a lot of offense points, and I, I might get skills like a quick incision and fatality, and things that will, because he, he eventually will have like six offense points, and he can swing three times, so even four times, with a one-handed weapon. Yeah, I'm gonna wear the light armor and an amulet to resist some magic. Bugmans to help me resist fear and terror. Yarp. Uh, dueling pistols. It's something I do with almost all my mercenaries. I like to have them have a ranged option and a melee option. This is because like, if once they use their melee weapon and they get wounded, they need to uh, retreat to the back line. They can still shoot from range. But we don't have that option here, unfortunately. Honestly, this is just a pretty good place to start, I think, in terms of a setup. Just hammer and mace, I think, is fine. Yeah, let's give him a pendant. Crimson Shade to increase initiative. Why not? It's like two gold. Costs almost nothing. Just a small bugbear of mine. If I was using two weapons like this, I would have my hammer in my right hand. The amulet. No ranged weapons. I could give him a halberd, but let's compare the damage. 34 to 42. 40 to 45. 44 initiative. I think I prefer the, the halberd then, actually. In fact, in that case, I can always I can always give him two maces then, just to make them super accurate. Plus eight hit chance. And hunting rifle. I've got three offense points. It costs two offense points to shoot the longbow. I mean, this is way more damage with the hunting rifle. And then just a dagger for, for maximum dodging. Equipment wise, nothing. Door, nothing. Poison resistance, don't bother. Okay, cool. So that's our first little starting squad. And the Warband, rename Warband. Not the chosen for you, this is the War Pigs. Although technically, if we're gonna be the War Pigs, we should have our colors be red and green. But as they were when we played in uh, Battle Brothers. Where's red and green? The three could work, but I think there's another one as well. Yeah, it's gotta be three. Oh yeah. Let's hope the war pigs do well. I 
But mostly when I was playing offline, I was playing a lot of Skaven, and I quite like the Skaven because of how quick they move, and it means that I find myself playing Wordstone Rushes the most. It's still my favorite to do, but I look at the mission description, and when I see scattered around the area randomly, I tend to, I won't take that unless the, the, the rewards are amazing. I really don't like that mission type. When you play the human mercenaries, we're a bit slower, so we, and, but we're a bit stronger fighters when it comes to a hand-to-hand. -hand. So we're actually better when it comes to these marked for death missions. The Crush Their Will missions I don't like. They're really hard to get the secondary objectives and we're going to be doing as much as we can to get the secondary objectives for the extra experience. The both teams disperse in the area. That could be pretty good. Scattered randomly. I don't like that. I think we'll take this one. It's got average wordstone and both warbands are in three strike teams. But it's, we're just going to make it two strike teams. It'll be one team with the... The young blood an enemy and one of the warriors fragmented into small patrols, possibly to try and slip past your own warband and escape with some wordstone. Aware of these patrols, you quickly dispatch your own forces in small groups to intercept them and prevent any enemies from leaving the area without a fight. Whoa, loading. Okay, so it looks like it's against another group of human mercenaries. Let's take a look at where all the wordstone is. They're gonna just they're gonna go right there. I think what I'll do is we'll put some of our quicker lads here, grab that wordstone and that wordstone and move along east. The slower lads we'll put here and then we'll all group up here, have the main battle be around this building. I'm gonna let the enemy grab all this wordstone because we can just take it off their corpses once we slay them. And I think running straight for there would be a mistake because they're gonna get there first. up north it is well I think I want these two together and the archer actually I'm gonna put the marksman with you guys as well I want three of you together because you're closest to the enemies Okay, let's get going. So, Alex Nesterov, you are very slow. So I think, actually, no, actually, you grab that wordstone and then go to the center. I'll grab that one and meet you there in a sec. It's in this building off to the left. Goodness sake. Just to the left on top of that stepway. Me, you just behind me into the left. Although it looks like it's up on that little platform. Now jump up there. Now I need to run around. Okay, so our first little bit of wordstone. And generally, I'm going to do my best to grab as much wordstone as I can in every single mission. But the way the battle starts is going to determine most of that. You've got to be super, super careful. Generally, when I have to choose between getting Wordstone and completing the secondary objective, I'll take the secondary objective. It's because that, that extra XP is super, super, super important. Let's see, so that is in that building. I think this might be a building that is... Hmm. It's here. Can I go down? Yes, I can. And it looks like it's above me and behind me. Aha! Just little wordstone fragments, not worth a lot. Love the look of that axe. Next, Dolmar. Can you grab this birdstone? 
I don't know whether it's up there. Yeah, I think it's up. Can I jump up here? It's behind me. I think I've got to go left to get up there. I could use perception, but we don't really have the percentage to do that. It's not going to work. Aha! <coughs> I suppose technically I should have sent my marksman. He'd be better, better suited to jump up there. Hey. Would I take the shot straight away? It depends. Darius Ingram, we want to get Helmut von Falkenberg, who is the enemy leader. If I try to grab that wordstone, this dude's going to catch me in melee range. I think I want to try to get up into this building. And we're going to have to meet up here, jump down here. I don't want to start fighting already, I want to spend more time gathering wordstone. Damn! Should not have. Oh man, if I hadn't have left him there. Can he reach me in the next turn? Yeah, he probably can. I can't stand there. I think I'll just I'll just Overwatch out this out this window. It has started. Okay, the new round started. Looks like we've got a few enemies quite close. This little group are pretty surrounded. Alex, grab this wordstone and get over there. Although technically I, I don't think I want to put Alex so far forward that he's off by himself. I want to make sure that I'm near him to support him. Can I get that nerd? Can't. Oh, I'm standing right in a trap. Nice warp effect. Hopefully it's the mobility. Armor absorption. Okay, only for two turns though. Jump straight down. I know this is going to hurt me, but only three damage. It's fine. Move your ass. And while I'm here, I may as well drop off this wordstone that I've picked up. I really don't like how my lads are all spread out. Also, I think there's an enemy marksman here on Overwatch. Yeah, there he is. This dude's initiative is 39. I could actually, I could technically wait, but let me see if I can maybe uh, charge at him and hit him, hit him out of ambush. No, but I can, I can ambush here and stop him from getting up those stairs. So then he shouldn't be able to hit my marksman. It looks like my entire five-man group is going to be uh, rendezvousing up here on this main street. Oh, are you kidding me? Where's the wordstone? It's not up here. Oh, it's probably in the basement in the bottom of this building. There it is. Uh, be a bit finicky, just a fragment. Well, I think I've I've dropped Dolmore down into a pretty dangerous position. I, I'm hoping it'll scramble up that high street where we're all standing. Now I happen to see that with Mizuma, I couldn't actually get an angle from up on the roof. I'm just going to stand here. Did I see height advantage there for a second? No. But at least I can take an aimed shot. The downside of using the hunting rifle is we don't get to see the advantage of using chain shot. Where subsequent shots are more accurate. Get him! Yes! Shot said. Ouchie. 
Seb are fair to you. Fucking legend. First blood. Drawn by Seb. Well done, mate. Edit these turns out. It takes too long. I ambushed someone. I mean, it's great that we got off the first kill. Has started. And that I've caught this marksman in melee range, but... I'm gonna kill this marksman, but most importantly, we gotta kill this dude here. Helmut von Falkenburg. He's gonna give us the optional objective. So I think we kill this marksman and we pull back. We don't take any more fights until we can make sure that we can get him. I can't even charge at that nerd. And that ends my turn. <sighs> Damn it. That's something I'm generally pretty damn bad at. I'm really bad at checking for traps. We rolled a 91, unlucky. Unlucky. It's actually gonna be a little bit difficult making sure that we don't uh, fight the rest of the enemies. Well, you're gonna have to do a lot of pulling back. Running away. Braces and a shuriken. Useless. Oh, there he is. There's Helmut von Falkenberg. Shit. Well, Dolmar. That's terrible for us. Can I get by there without him ambushing? Probably not. And even if I do get up there, all the all the the, the backup is quite far away. Shit. What's my best bet here? Holding the doorway. I should try to get first first strike. I should be able to charge at him further than he can ambush. Because he's wearing heavy armor. My movement range. It's only a 68% chance, but if I hit, I'll give him minus 10% chance to hit, and it'll do most of his damage. Most of his hit points, I mean. I mean he he counterattacks, but he was he was always gonna hit Dolmar. I don't see how Dolmar doesn't go down here. But getting that first hit's gonna be huge. Okay. Azuma. You should actually be able to have a visual from over here. Oh, come on, how can you not see him? On the next turn, I can jump down. I mean, maybe if I jump up here on the next turn. Actually, I'm not going to overwatch, because if a, an other enemy runs into visual range... Ooh, no more! Hans Liebner. No! Ah! No more, down he goes! A new round has started. I might actually disengage from this marksman and just ignore him. I mean, he'll take a shot most turns, but... Actually, no, they've still got 31 of their 16 morale. Let's make sure we get this. Kill this nerd. Yeah! And then the rest of the team has to regroup. That was really stupid of me to drop Dolmo down like that. Still, it's bloody great that he managed to get some damage in. That's going to make securing that secondary objective a lot easier. Ooh, Mason a crossbow. Yes, please. So what's the plan? 
we pull everybody back and we meet around about here. And then we just gotta make sure we have to kill this dude, Helmut von Falkenberg. If that nerd or Hans Liebner get into range. I mean, I'd love to get my hands on all of this wordstone as well. Maybe we all group up here, swing around this way. Actually, Seb, hang around here and and just help basically guard uh, our marksman. Azuma. Uh, I'm not overwatching with Mizuma because I, I, I desperately want to only kill their leader. I don't want him wasting an overwatch shot on someone else. We didn't spot him, but we did hear him hit a trap, so I'm just wondering... I think he ran along this way here, hit that trap. No, that's the marksman. Oh, no, there he is. Heading to the left, there he is. Yeah, so he's gonna be running up, he can jump up here on the next turn. Actually means... Scratch the idea of getting the wordstone. We gotta meet along here, kill him, get the secondary objective. A new round has started. We've gotta drop off that wordstone, but no, we all need to meet up now. Bloody hell. Annoying that he's there, but I really I don't want to fight him. I'm just going to have to accept that damage. Yeah, so I'm expecting the enemy leader to come up here or jump up just a bit to the right there. Seb, hang around here and ambush. But can he, he can't jump up here, can he? But he can come through... Oh, that's where he can jump up. Now I get a height advantage here anywhere. Like I can. But it won't give me good vision there. That would... But again, I don't want to waste the overwatch shot. Okay, Helmut, let's see what he does. Yep, he's trying to jump up there. We heard him scuffling and falling. A new round has started. Ow! And he's going to shoot probably twice a turn. I mean, I could use Alex Nestor off to time up in melee. But honestly, it's just... As soon as we kill their leader, then the, the mission should be over anyways. He didn't actually jump up, did he? No, so he is sitting right there. <coughs> that marksman's gonna overwatch shoot at me, but... No, what can you do about that? Owie! Now, can I sneak here and charge at him? I can, before he... It's one thing I've learnt about how the ambushing works in this game. If your guy's wearing heavy armor, he's not going to move as far, and your ambush range is tied to your movement range. So enemies or units in lighter armor who can move further are, are better. Uh, better at ambushing. So yeah, I should be able to swing twice here, and I should be able to... Oh my word, Seb, with his 
two-handed axe. What an absolute monster. And he's gotten us another crossbow as well, which is awesome. I'm going to swap the wordstone for the madcaps. Deb, can you even charge at that nerd? No. Good, so their morale is rock bottom now. We should have won already. Just want to see if I can get Mizuma. Loot that body. Crossbow and a helmet. Nice. Get him, Azuma. Nice. Well fought, men. Yeah! It's such a pity that Dolmar got taken down there. That was my stupidity for jumping him down. Awesome. So, we were very light on the wordstone. We didn't get luck, but completing the secondary objective is the most important thing. A warrior. Needs a bit of luck and a lot of skill to win a battle. But most of all, he needs strategy. The big question is, nice experience. Has Dolmar gotten a permanent wound? Near-death experience, awesome! Who actually gets a bonus experience point, although he's out for five days. Okay, Domo, you've earned some time in reserve. Let's get ourselves another marksman. Why not? Who's next? Dwarf and Blues. Dwarf and Blues, welcome. Weapon wise, I think he's probably better for the crossbow. I mean, yeah, he can only shoot once with a longbow anyway, so 20 to 24, same amount of distance, more damage. It does make him slower, which kind of sucks, but... Okay, so leadership is my primary stat here. The leader. And then the way I'm going to level up all my guys is going to depend on the skills that I want. I find for for the captain, my for the leader, the first skill I always get is courage, and then I always level that up as soon as I can with the next four points. I want level two courage. Because all alone fear and terror is by far the biggest weakness of my of my lads in the early game. I mean, oftentimes in the first mission actually, you'll fight against vampires and get wiped. Because just the enemy vampire makes everyone a, a fear fearful and then they can't hit him. So should I go for weapon skill? I'm going to think about the first skill that I want. I mean, alertness. What what's good skills are there with alertness? Staggering blow. Let's see. Debuff. It reduces initiative. Nah. Stimulus is pretty good. Use that to, 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 to hype up some of my slower guys. Pretty good. Ready stance. Good by 10. Guards advanced. Guard stance. Armor absorption by five. Sniper shot is going to be very good for my marksman and tactician. Three by one, nah. Combat expertise, we're engaged with two or more dodge and parry. That's pretty good. Quick hit resistance, we're going to take that. And then the ranged guys will take that. So what is actually my, my first skill going to be? It's not going to be flash parry because I'm going to be using two-handed weapons or one-handed weapons quite a lot. I think I'm going to go into accuracy first. I want quick incision is actually pretty much amazing on the young bloods. They tend to have the highest initiative, so they go in, tend to go first. And with a one-handed weapon, they can attack like three or four times, potentially getting three or four stacks of quick incision. Then the slower guys who act after them tend to benefit from quick incision. So I need six accuracy, nine accuracy. Wow, so I'm not going to be using that anytime soon. For my warriors, weapon skill or accuracy? Now oh, he's injured, I can't check right now. Uh, 
I mean, getting... Where is it? Insult is probably my favorite skill. Reduce melee resistance by 10. That's just excellent. But it needs 6 leadership, and we're nowhere near getting that. Getting Strike is pretty damn good, too. If it hits, debuff reduces melee resistance. It just makes everybody very hard to hit. But I don't think you don't need kidney strike and insult. Strong blow. This chance to parry. But I think for these dudes, I want where is it? Precise strike. Minus 25% chance to parry or dodge. Faint. I like faint actually on these guys. I think I'm gonna go for combat expertise. That's gonna require going high in intelligence on my lads, though. Although, actually, it doesn't technically matter what the second level is because you can't get masteries. So, for the passive skills and for the masteries, I want to get the ones that give me the most bang for their buck. I mean, that's dodge and parry 10%, which is excellent. Critical hit by five, that's kind of meh. I think I want to go for Flash Parry as soon as I can. Which requires Weapon Skill, so we get Weapon Skill on the Warriors then. Because eventually I'm going to have my Warriors in Light Armor with Swords and Shields. The Leader will also be using actually Heavy Armor because he can get the mastery of Heavy Armor. Uh, one, one hand Weapon and Shield. And then the Young Bloods and the other Impressive Warriors will use two-handed weapons. That's the idea. A new shipment has been requested. Yeah, we need 75 weight. We've already got, what, 12? Okay, so on the next episode, we'll probably do this one. Each warband in a wide arc. Wordstone rush. Normal average. You know, this one might be, be might be better, actually, because... Both warbands and the three strike teams. I think we'll do the wordstone rush in the next one. Each warband and a wide arc. Just grab all the wordstone. Okay, so I think that was a pretty interesting first episode. Like I said, I'll do my best to edit out all the, the slow parts of the enemy's turns when nothing much is happening. Hope you lads enjoyed. If you want to get involved, leave a comment in the in the uh, in the comment section and I'll add you to the list of names. Malice Wonderland is next in, then oh no, then Raidens, then Memers Cat, then Ovi Jering and Raheem Hunter. Thanks for watching friends, see you next time.